Yeah, we live. We live. I'm waiting for people to pop in. I want a little audience before we start goofing and doing uh, refutations. No viewership yet, but we'll get there. Let's just goof at this. See all that? Okay. No, not what I want there. I can kick myself off. Okay, I believe we have stuff going on here now. I'm making a map as we wait for people, like I said. Okay, nice. So that's kind of how I do my maps of uh, demography, stuff like that. I generally erase stuff which are very sparsely populated regions, like no one lives there. And I'm sorry to say that nobody lives in much of Russia. That's okay. They live in the cool parts. No, well, people live there. They don't really live here. And they don't really live there. Yeah. Surprise you to know much of Central Asia. It's kind of empty. Yeah, these are all, all empty land, guys. Let's see if we got anyone joining. Map gaming. It's not. No, it is not Shards of Iron 4. I've never played that. Um, you hear me? I got my audio on. I'm just goofing until people join in. We will do some sneako material. Yeah, like nobody lives in Montana, guys. Sorry. I know that there are people who live there. But when you're doing a map of demography, a gigantic area with like 2 million people is kind of misrepresenting. Like Nobody lives here. I don't care about this one dude who lives there. I'm trying to make this as realistic as possible. This is what the world actually looks like. You want to include... I don't have my mouse with me, so I'm clicking kind of slowly. These are the areas that, like, real human beings actually reside in. I'm willing to leave these areas here. I think we're pretty good. This is generally what we got for planet Earth. So if you want to look at that seriously, that would be demography. Very roughly done. No one lives there. So... Now, when you look at religion, of course, you're not going to see giant areas like this and go, oh, it's the domain of the Maliki jurisprudence of uh, the Sunni Muslims. It's not because um, nobody lives here except some like Tuareg tribes and Tuareg are pretty cool. And then, like large parts of China are empty. Like this whole area here, only 80 million people live in this entire area. So it's like parts of Russia that are kind of empty. And then like Scandinavia, that part's empty. Um, actually, I hate to say, but large parts of Spain are actually kind of empty. People live there, but a lot of Spain's empty, and some of Portugal's empty. And I know that there's people who live there that will protest my, my video, but anyway, that's kind of basics of demography. So now you see India's full, and this bubble of Han China's full. So that is why Hinduism and Buddhism have large populations, but people say, oh, they only exist in one part of the world. It's a very popular part of the world. Anyway, we're going to get going now. We're going to get going now. So it is now time to do a little refutation of Monsieur Sneeko. So I'll move myself in there. And then uh, I'm going to get rid of that one. Stop that screen share. I'm going to start a new screen share. Let me get it open. Mm -hmm. We've got a little bit of Sneeko here. Okay. Anyone has any questions before we begin, let me know, but don't try not to have any. All right, let's go back. And let us uh, begin with a refutation. Let's go. Share screen. Uh, let's go there. I'm going to get rid of that. People don't say I'm an Arabic Muslim, they don't say I'm an Indonesian Muslim, they just say Muslim. That's well, the number one thing I hear from the last. I'm a Serbian Muslim, what does that mean? As that's just, country, just tell me, tell me well, what Eastern just refers typically to the fact that the East and West had a split in the schism in 1054 between what becomes the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Church. We call ourselves particularly Eastern Orthodox to distinct us from the Oriental Orthodox in Egypt, Ethiopia, Armenia, who we have Christological disagreements with. So it's just to point out the distinction in between, because they also call themselves the Oriental Orthodox in Arabic, 
for them, Oriental East, it's pretty much the same word. So we only say it in English really to distinct in just normal conversation. We just I personally think, and I told you this to Daniel Kakish and other people on my channel, that the Oriental Orthodox should just call themselves the Eastern Orthodox and that the Eastern Orthodox should just call themselves the Roman Orthodox. I don't understand. I mean, it's way too late to change that. But in English, that would make sense. That's what Arabs call it. So the Orthodox, like us, EO, it's Rum. And Rum means Roman. So it's the same as calling somebody like a Melkite. It means follower of the ruler, the emperor. That's what Melkite means. And so a Rum Christian is a Roman, but it means Eastern Roman. And then you get into Catholicism, it's a little bit different because the Catholic groups in the Middle East tend to have their own sects, like the Syriac Catholic Church, the Chaldean Catholic Church, the Maronite Catholic Church. So they just call them Chaldeans, Syriacs, and Maronites. But anyway, Rum means Roman. That's what Eastern Orthodox is. We'll continue. Just call ourselves Orthodox. Right. It's just for the sake of making sure that it's clear what position we are holding to. That will just be Chalcedonian Christology. Yeah. That will just be basic stuff like Theophysitism. So as opposed to their view of uh, strict meophysitism or monophysite. I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. It's okay, it's okay. Mm. <laughs> Don't worry, we're just, we're just having a little... Yeah, question, yeah, right? yeah. You said Eastern Orthodox. Yeah. Uh, Syrian Orthodox, Russian Orthodox. Yeah, I go to a, I go to a uh, Greek church. <laughs> okay, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Just, just ask. No, no, come, come. I want to I have a little dialogue with you. In three persons. God is one in nature mentioned in second peter 1 4 the divine finds this in greek so we understand there's one nature that's what we refer to when we say one god these persons have the nature god is one in nature tr try and hypostasis what's interesting here is that muslims are used to debating catholics and most catholics will say that the trinity is only known by revelation you cannot reach the trinity by natural reasoning and law and logic so Catholics would just say it was revealed. Whether that means scripture or the early church depends on the Catholic. But the Orthodox would also say it's, again, by revelation, but you can prove it very easily looking at the Old and the New Testaments. Where some Catholics, like Trent Horn, will say, no, the Old Testament was just Unitarian, very vague monotheism, and the Trinity is revealed in the New. So a lot of Muslims are, are unaware of the Eastern way in which we apologize, give apologetics for the theology. But the hypostasis aren't separate beings because being is once again proper to the nature. So there's one being in three persons. What's that word you're using? Hypostasis. What's your definition of that? Person, individual subsistence and a rational so nature. They're separate or they're together? Distinct, not separate. What's the difference between distinct and separate? Well, separable means they can be taken apart. We're not saying they can be it's taken apart. It's semantics. I can't, I, I, I it's not semantics, it's metaphysically different. Separation implies like this I can separate this from okay, So basically, you no, know, Sneeko doesn't understand the concept of, and this is a big one, guys. This is what you're going to have to learn when you're talking with Muslims. You have to mention, if you're going to talk about the Trinity, a nature-person distinction. That's what they're looking for. That's what they want to hear. You have to say there is a difference between something's nature and its personhood. So via the Trinity, you'd have the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are all persons, distinct as persons, not distinct as nature, because they share the same nature. So that's what they're looking for. They don't care about what hypostasis means. They don't know. They don't want to know. I mean, you know, ground level guys like this, not actual learned theologians. Myself. But a distinction just implies that there is a difference between two things without being able to separate them. And they're different insofar as their identity as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're not different insofar as their nature once again. We all see the videos and photos. No, no, we don't. I'm going to skip. Sorry, guys. Okay. So, are you sure you believe in one? Absolutely. I believe in one God. Okay. So, when you pray, do you pray to God or you pray to Jesus? Either or. It's the same thing. Either. Is that, that mean Actually, that I do like what he said there because according to many presbyters, even in modernist schools, such as St. Vladimir's Orthodox Theological Seminary, when you pray to the Son of the Holy Spirit, uh, that prayer is rebounding to the Father as the origin and source. So you're not praying to the Father one day and you go, well, the Father accepted my prayer, but the Son and the Spirit didn't. Now I'm going to pray to the Son and the Spirit. Oh, well, now the Father didn't accept my prayer. A prayer to one is a prayer to the Father. 
and that he is kind of the origin and rebounding of all things. So that is what it means when you say they're the same. I do like, I actually don't know who this guy is. He's doing a good job representing. That's what it means when you say either or they're the same. So it's a decent way to explain it, given even modernist Eastern Orthodox um, apologetics. All right, let's continue. Yeah, you guys can sleep, obviously, if you want. That applies, too. <laughs> yeah. See how the language is already... You can, you, you can make a linguistic point if you want. The point is, I could say, I could say, oh, God, or I could say, oh, Jesus. I'm just saying there's not really a distinction between saying either of those things. Okay. It's, the, it's, like, the, okay, it's okay. like the difference between saying, oh, Ya Allah and Ya Rahman. It's just, you can say either or. I would say it's a little different. I, don't, I would disagree with that. I would say it's a little different because when we say God, most of the time, we mean the Father. And that's just not that's not just oh, some secret, like very rare form of orthodoxy that I'm representing. This is traditional orthodoxy. Uh, there's nothing wrong with referring to the entire Trinity or the Godhead as God, because the word God is just a title. It's not actually a name. But when we use that title, the New Testament in particular, and if you read many of the church fathers, and even if you read many of our prayers and prayer books and other places, it'll say, you know, we're praying to Christ our God. So it'll call him God when it says Christ firstly. It's like Christ our God, the Son our God, Jesus our God, etc. But when it just says the word God by itself, unless there's some other other reference where we know it's the Son, maybe you mentioned the Theotokos, but if there is no such reference, the word God usually means the Father. That's how the New Testament is written. That's why there's so many epistles that go, you know, by the grace of the God and Father of our Lord Christ, or to God the Father through our Lord Christ with the Holy Spirit, and so that's how we would we would we would be comfortable saying uh, we have God and Christ because God means the Father in that context. But if we would say the Godhead is God, that's also not incorrect. So the word God is fluid, and uh, it's not improper to say that the three are God, but it's also not improper to say actually the Father is God and the Son is God's Son. That's what it means when it says son of God. So we don't have to we don't have to reject saying he is God's son. How is he God at the same time? Because he's the son of the father. I mean, that's just the basics. So we'll continue. Oh, but you're referencing back to the same being, right? That's just two names. Yeah, that's the point. And we're just giving you two names of persons in the Godhead. You're saying two distinct not, beings. See, you need to not say names. separate entities. These are distinct persons, but they are one being. So that's just not characterizing what I said correctly. So is that your contention, Christianity, that we're allegedly tritheists or polytheists? Is that your contention? No, that's just why, that's what I don't resonate. It never makes sense to me. I well, I just to people, like, broke it down. Let me explain. I speak to Ethan Orthodox, Catholics, mm -hmm. Jehovah's Witnesses, Christian scientists, Mormons. Everybody has a different definition. Yeah, whether it's a that's true. That's true. Because that's what makes them a different, that's what makes them different denominations. I'm going to agree with Sneeko here. Many of the different denominations do have a different trinity and essentially it makes it a different God. So the JWs, they don't even have a trinity, so let's ignore them for now. But when we look at the Catholics and the Orthodox, theoretically, they should both believe in monarchia. I don't see why Catholics should deny monarchia. You can have monarchia with the filioque uh, because the Father is still the source of the Son. Even if the Son is the source of the Spirit, the Father goes beyond that, and he's the source of the Son. But in any event, a lot of Catholics don't emphasize monarchia, so you have that kind of a problem, especially amongst American Catholics. Uh, then you have the Eastern Orthodox, of course. Orientals don't have a massive influence in like this Western Muslim versus Christian debate at the moment. And the Protestants have all manner of different Trinitarian formulas, like the Trinity by relation, social Trinitarianism, economic Trinitarianism, ontological Trinitarianism, within economic Trinitarianism. So we just go on and on. So that is correct, but that's why we need to know what our theology is. So I feel like Sneeko converted, and as someone else said, who was his name? Uh, it feels like Sneeko only knows, you know, pop questions. Pop questions. Eric Olson, I will get back to the map at another point, so thank you for bringing that up. Let's continue this video, see what else he says. It's a form, it's a distinct being. Jesus is God, there's only one God, there's three gods, there's the Holy Spirit. Which, 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 which Christians are you talking to that said there's three gods? Oh, a lot. The, the, the Christians are never consistent about what they believe. Well, like, anyone the who first told time you that I've heard the hypotheses, I've never heard. Well, that. there are. I will say this: there are, according to Doctor Bill Branson, three lowercase g gods. That means three persons who have divinity. Yeah, that's true. Because the lowercase g just means divinity. But there, 
is not three uppercase G gods. There's only one nature. There's only one father. The father's the originator. And the son is the reflection of the father's light. That's why he's light of light, true God of true God. And that's why when people tell me, oh, you can't say the father is the one true God, I disagree. The father is the one true God. Otherwise, there's what is Christ representing and what is he the reflection of? Because if the father by himself cannot be called the one true God, then how is the son in Hebrews 1 verse 3 being called the character, the exact radiance and representation of the father? How is he doing that if the father isn't the one true God? And then I believe that that would be the perfect way to explain proper monarchy and Trinitarianism. The creed says he's true God of true God. And the creed does not say, I believe in one God, the, the nature. It says, I believe in one God, the Father. So this kind of language is perfectly acceptable. It has nothing to do with the actual heresy known as subordinationism or semi-Arianism. It's just this is the ancient concept of Trinitarianism. And I would say it's the New Testament concept. And I would say it's the early church fathers. This is how they talk. So people get upset when Irenaeus and St. Justin Martyr say God and Christ. That's exactly what they're talking about. There's no reason to get upset there. That's, that's the standard formula that has been for centuries, for two, nearly 2,000 years, this has been our standard formula, formulization. I mean, once again, I don't know any I'm Christian who says... The first time I've heard a Christian say, like, ask, okay, you believe in one God, and then he says, yeah. either or. If you played a one, you wouldn't use the word either. I don't understand what you mean by that. You said this is all just, I don't understand the nature-person distinction. The Muslims don't understand that. That's fine. They don't really have that concept. But you need to tell them what is the nature person distinction. They don't get it. They don't get that when a Christian says, I believe in one God, they mean the nature most of the time. I believe in one essence. That's what they mean. So we have to explain that to what a Muslim is. I mean, this is very, this is very, uh, you know, baby food stuff. So let's continue. You believe in one. I'm going to increase the speed here because this, this might be brutal if we go at normal speed. You say you believe in one, but yeah. you ask, who do you pray to, Jesus or God? You said either one. No, I'm, either saying, I'm saying either or. Well, you either can twist or. my language if you want, but as I already made clear, we're talking about hypostases. We're talking about the fact that any of them are God according to us, but we still pray to any of them as God. There's not really a distinction in regards that they are God. But there's no difference between that and saying you can call upon any of the names of your God and it's still referring to the same being. That's not necessarily a problem. Yeah. Yeah, no, that sort of rhetoric is why I love Christianity and why Coheed makes sense to me. The well, that's not rhetoric. That's pulling it rhetoric isn't, you know. What I would say to Sneeko here is I wouldn't. I wouldn't make the comparison. I'm not meaning to insult the host here. I wouldn't make the comparison that the divine titles given to Allah in Islam are the same, at, or Islam, I mean, are the same as the three persons. Um, because I, I would just simply say that, yeah, we believe in one God. One God is the Father. The Son is the exact expression of that one God. Uh, the Son is wisdom. We don't believe that wisdom is created. How God would have to create his wisdom, so it wouldn't it wouldn't be part of his eternal being. So if wisdom is not part of his being, then God is not wise. And uh, it just opens up a can of worms on theological terms. And I don't think Muslims would say that the wisdom of God is, is not uh, eternal. So that would be a very interesting point to bring up. But <coughs> <clears throat> the point being... Uh, the Aryans, the real Aryans, not the semi-Aryans, but some of the hardcore Aryans who were basing their theology on Neoplatonism, end up with the issue of having two creators. So a lot of Muslims say, you know, why do you need the Trinity to just believe in Unitarianism? But if you believe in just basic Unitarianism, you end up with two creators. Because the letter to the Hebrews is very clear that Christ is responsible for creating all things. Uh, he's the, the, the tool or the bridge by which the Father relates to the created order and creates all things. So nothing has ever been made that Christ, the Son, the Eternal Lord, was not involved in. And if he's not the Eternal Word, if he's just a mere creature on the same level as created order, then you have two creators. You have a creator, God, and then you have another creator who's a created creator. And so that's why when, when Muslims say, oh, why do you need the Trinity? Because this makes much more sense than saying we have a created creator and we have two creators at the same time. That doesn't make any, that is real polytheism. I'm not calling it rhetoric. I'm you did. You said, it's, you said that sort of rhetoric. You're explaining it right now. It, just, it still doesn't make sense. That's called a personal incredulity fallacy. So appealing to your own lack of understanding of a thing does not entail a thing is not true. That's fallacious. This is Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel. Hey, this is not AO. Don't call her a Your mother. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my name is Ebony Obsidian. Interesting. Wouldn't that kind of be... Uh, wouldn't that kind of be... Um, what's the word for that? 
I don't know. I forgot the word, but ebony and obsidian mean the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, let's continue. Any questions first before I get into that? Grift. Everybody's grifting. Yeah, uh, here's the thing. With the Crisis King thing, I think everybody's grifting on that. Um, he's either messing or he just thinks that, you know, saying Crisis King is, uh, you know, dabbing on everybody else. Can you guys hear me right now, even though I'm not technically? Like, I'm in the studio, but you can't see me. So before I continue, can you guys hear my voice as I'm doing the review? Um, I would I would agree with that. I'm assuming you're Eastern Orthodox. Yes, we can. Great, let's continue. Okay, now, now it's a little fast. Sorry. I wasn't... Don't call women a shard mood, so that's the suspect of the garden. You motherfucker! Regardless, regardless don't call people a shard mood to be better. Yeah, please, man. His dick longer than donkey. Okay, let's, uh, I have no idea what this is. I have no idea what this dude, maybe we can get back to the Sneeko thing. Wow, interesting. Sorry, to my understanding. If something doesn't make yes. logical sense to me, if I don't understand, all it, I was I'm sta- not going to believe it. All I was stating, it's all I was personal. stating. I'm not, that's not a personal attack on your well, face. It just it doesn't make sense to me. Well, all I was- very, that's very Aristotelian and Platonic of Sneeko. Things don't have to make 100% sense. Uh, Deuteronomy 2929 says, secret things belong to the Lord our God, but what's been revealed to us and to our sons is for us. Or maybe, sorry, it's the other way around. But in either, in either way, uh, we don't have to know everything. And it's very Aristotelian to uh, say we must define everything. Everything needs to make sense according to me. But it might not make sense according to you, but it could make sense to God. So that wouldn't be – that by itself wouldn't work as an argument, especially because some people are dumb and not everything can make sense to them. Even now, the way you explained it, hypostasis, yeah. either or, distinct. It still, it still doesn't make sense, and I don't yeah. think anybody will ever be, maybe able well, to Well, so. it's made sense and been understood quite consistently throughout many fields of philosophy and theology for centuries. That's not true. But what I was pointing out there is appealing to, I don't understand this, or this doesn't make sense to me, doesn't actually prove the thing in question full. It doesn't follow yeah, to... I have a question for you. Are you a hypocrite? Sometimes. Is that what Jesus taught you? No, Jesus taught me to be better. But... What is that? That's like saying, do you sin? Yeah, oh, well, if you're a real Christian, you wouldn't sin. But in any event... I would actually stay away from the hypostases arguments, guys, and I'm going to give you a real secret weapon as to why. Um, a lot of people get into this whole, oh, you know, Christianity is just about these hypostases. But Philip Schaff, in his book, The Seven Ecumenical Councils, basically says that the word hypostases, even though we all understand it as person, when scrutinized, can eventually devolve into a deribboned argument of nothing. Uh, and it doesn't mean it's a gibberish word. But when you just keep saying and repeating the same thing over, especially to a religion that doesn't acknowledge the difference between nature and person, I don't think it's effective when talking to Muslims. So we got us. It's like saying we have a soul and three arms. Like that's how they're viewing it. You have a soul with three arms. Isn't that three arms? Isn't that three gods? That's what they'll say. And so my response would just be the father's the one true God. The son is his reflection. All right. And the Holy Spirit also possesses the same divinity that the Father has, but the Father bestowed that divinity eternally on the Son of the Holy Spirit by causing them. That's my cat in the background. By causing them. They are caused. All right. So we, that's a very important point because if there was no causation, if there was no begetting of the Son, proceeding of the Spirit, it would actually be even more difficult to understand. Uh, the concept of the Trinity. So th- the fact that they are caused by the Father helps a great deal in explicating Christianity to a Muslim. So I'm not saying you can't talk about hypostases, but to a Muslim, they don't care. Like This sounds like gibberish. It sounds like a placeholder for a fancy way to say three gods. I've spoken to many Muslims and Jews about this. They view this word and the usage that we use of it as you're just inventing a distinction so that you don't have three gods. So avoid that and just say, we don't have three gods. We have one God, the Father. The Son is a reflection of the Father. He has the same divinity of the Father. Therefore, he is God because he's one in essence with the Father. I and my Father are one. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We don't have two creators. I think that's the best answer to that, if if you ask me. Um, Let's continue. I'm also a human who falls and makes mistakes. Go ahead. Because your Christian sister is cursing. Oh, yeah, I disagree with her. But, but you don't say anything to her. Oh, I do. I, I don't care about what about it. I'm like, some dude on the other side of the planet with a cross is bad, therefore Christianity is wrong. 
I was just telling him that by engaging well, in this, cursing the greatest I agree. Right, let's continue. Where, where does Sneeko come into this, guys? Um, okay. I'm going to close this one out and start a new video. So give me one second. We back. Give me one moment, guys. I'm going to do a new tab and screen share it. So share screen. Anyone got any questions? That was your one and only time. Let's do that. Uh, history. Where's the other one? I think that's it. Let's go. Okay, I'm already using StreamYard. I don't need the ad for it. <coughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right, do you mind if I have a dialogue? Right, brother. Hello. We've got a Christian but ethno nationalist over there. Would you be interested? You know, who's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's ribbon, then. Uh, the Bible and the Quran. Right, the, the Quran has never been changed. Okay, Bible and Quran. Let's get into that, guys. He looks Jewish up there. Hey, let's talk. Sure, sure, sure. You see. Sure. So I was wondering what your perspective was about uh, the preservation of the Bible and the Quran. Right, the, the Quran has never been changed. In, uh, never been changed. So there's only one Quran. Yeah, it's only, only only one version of the Quran. Is only one version changed. of the Quran. Ooh. Yeah, and, and since then, like people have been able to recite it, even if all the Qurans were burned, then we'd be able right, to. Right, right. Because the oral tradition, you know exactly what it is, so you can recite it. Oh, I can't heart. recite it, but people can oh, memorize can. it. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, memorize this can. So, do you accept that there's ten kilaats of the Quran, ten different readings? Yeah, I would say this is not the best argument, guys. It doesn't matter if there's ten variant readings because the eternal most muslims would say the real theologian would say the eternal arabic that was given by god in order to form the quran does not have to be a one-to-one -one exact ontological existence with the manner in which it's being said on earth or the arabic that was written by the strokes of pens into the qurans that they read so i would not i wouldn't use this kind of argument i don't think it's that strong if, if i were muslim i'd say yeah there's there's different couple different pronunciations but the revealed creed is still the revealed creed so long as the theology doesn't change whether a scripture says there were two blue donkeys or two turquoise donkeys in a different inflection of arabic is really not that relevant unless like you know there's a secret kiraat which says actually guys aisa is part of the trinity and the trinity is real well then that would be a major difference but far as i have researched these differences are not that important and most people who are not uh super uh hanbali they don't follow the teaching of ahmad ibn hanbal they really won't care if there's differences in the kiraat so i wouldn't call that the most important thing to worry about other gnostic ideas in is in islam I, I don't know why people say gnosticism all the time i think it's neoplatonism i don't know where the gnostic who coined that was that like jay smith or something like i think it's neoplatonism and uh i would say that that islam does hellenism more technically and on a larger scale than christianity does now that by itself doesn't disprove it i'm just saying it's a very hellenistic religion when you actually get into their metaphysics and everything their philosophy and if you're not talking about wahhabi restorationism like real traditional sunni islam then yeah it's a very greek religion and uh i would say it's neoplatonic let's continue sure. no so there's uh different recitations like just like there's different uh, Maliki al Madin or Maliki al Madin, owner or king in Arabic. They're two different words. So if you want to read up about this, you can get a book. Yeah, I will read that one time. Let's skip ahead. Then but the Quran is not perfectly preserved. Because no, I, I'll Quran. read that book and I'll, I'll see if that's, if that's the case. It's the first time I've heard that. Okay, okay. Well, all right. I think you can see the point that the Quran isn't perfectly preserved, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. That's according to you. Well, that's according to the scholars I quoted. I mean, you can ask my job. He has the same view. Because the question is, which one is divinely revealed? Is yeah. it king or is it Oprah? Well, it gets a bit more complicated because there's supposed to be seven alus. Also, keep in mind that Uthman means that's against the man. It's a, is that, well, actually, Uthman, you know, Uthman canonized the Quran. Do yeah. you know about that canonization process? No, no. It's not okay, so the third caliph. People like that. Yeah, so, so Uthman put together a committee around 652 time to around 656. And he put together this committee to collect different Quranic materials from different places because there were reports of people arguing about what the Quran was because they differed. He then decided... Yeah, the whole thing with Uthman is very interesting because <coughs> just like I mentioned in the previous video, doesn't make a lot of sense for Muslims to be dabbing on Paul and like the ecumenical councils when they had a guy course correcting what was the correct uh, pronunciation, the correct version, script, etc. 
and recitation of the Quran not long after uh, Muhammad is gone. So I, I, I just think that there's too many similarities and things that occur within Christian and early Islamic history that it makes no sense for Muslims to get upset about Paul and other such ideas. I'm going to find another video about Sneeko soon, so I'm just skipping ahead. I don't know what this is. Oh, give me a sec. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not going to happen in that book. Don't buy that. I think you're in security. No, I'd hold it. I'd hold it. I'd hold it. That's a too cold cray fallacy. Whether, there is, whether it was or was not the case that the Bible was preserved or not. No, that's why I know it's about Christians. Hold on, you guys just project. Hold on, I was still... You're in security. Hold on, I was still... Right, you going? Still, you going? He just walked off. All right. That was a quick debate. Where's he going? Where's he going? Where's he going? Conversations. So these guys are blubbering about textual criticism. I would say I don't like to get into those arguments because it doesn't work out well for anybody. People have to spend hours defending their textual criticism and then there's no time left for actual theology. I would say that the Bible is very well preserved. I was just reading uh, Eusebius's entire church history book. He mentions frequently something that I've been vindicated on multiple times on my channel, which is that uh, the Gospels, at least Matthew and potentially John's, are written originally in Hebrew. So even if some Greek dating says 95 AD or 120 AD, number one, that may not be the oldest Greek manuscript because the oldest Greek manuscript could have already been destroyed. And we, this is just the oldest one so far found. Number two, we know that Matthew's gospel, according to a variety of different people, a variety, Irenaeus, Eusebius, Epiphanius, Clement, et cetera, et cetera, was housed in the library of Caesarea. It was written in Hebrew to the Hebrew people. That also makes sense because the Gospel of Matthew has the highest uh, references to the Old Testament law and the prophets. And so if that's written in Hebrew and we have no Hebrew and we only have the Greek, and even if Matthew's very early, the Hebrew would have been earlier than that. It's always a good point to mention because Muslims will say they have issues with the Greek. Well, fine. We have multiple books that were written in Hebrew originally. So that kind of defeats the whole entire line of reasoning here that we have to worry about the dates of Greek manuscripts. Do you want to debate? Oh, so that comes to you like to be ableist. Two Muslims now. Right, but the thing is that he should know this stuff. Like, and so should you. You know, you should be aware of this is the case. I agree, but what I'm saying is, like, let's say you present a new bit of information to me. When did you expect me to go, oh, yeah, okay, I won't take the stance and agree right now? Okay. Because there are two objectives to have like super, super informed conversations mm. to find the most informed people. Huh? Right. Oh, absolutely. I love so to debate the most informed like people. Like, I'm not happy. Yeah. All right. I think we settled the textual criticism stuff here. Sneeko, Sneeko, Islam, Christianity, Trinity. I mean, he's done a lot of these, so I want to find more of his issues. Christian Shock, the Young Don. Oh, look, there's me. All right, this this is the one I want to look at. Read it for yourself. You know, if you haven't, if you have that feeling where, where the things you were being told in church just didn't make sense, Islam is the one that didn't make sense. And I, I completely agree. And I think that that's the next step for somebody like Young Don. If, once they get past the Trinity and realize that logically it doesn't make sense based on the scripture, um, then that's that's actually what made me realize that Islam must be the, the one true religion because... Uh, it has an actual explanation for the creator and the Christians want Sneagle to leave Islam for Christianity, Yang Don, Yang Don, et cetera, et cetera. All right, we're, I think we're, we're done with this share screening for the moment. Okay, so guys, uh, let's talk a little bit about, I will get ad block, but um, there are some ads I enjoy seeing. Let's talk a little bit about Sneeko. Let's talk about his journey and then Yang Don. We're actually going to talk about Yang Don first. Not without a message first from that boy right there. Yeah, you clean that body, pork. Anyway, uh, when we look at young Don, I want to talk about him for a second. We notice some interesting things about Mr. Don, Donald Daniel, reborn. Uh, he was a Christian, right? He used to do some kind of content creating. Then he became an avid Christian. Then he just jumped into the debate scene, started calling everybody Kufar, like two machine guns in hand, everybody's Kufar. And then he became a Kufar. Well, surprise, surprise, because he jumped so quickly into the theology scene. At first, he was like a law-abiding, Seventh-day Adventist, adjacent Christian. He believed in the law. He believed in, like, Judaizing, so on. And then he reveals, actually, the law of Moses is a curse, and you shouldn't do it at all. 
but you should keep the Sabbath and the dietary laws that are mentioned in uh, the Torah. So obviously keep the Sabbath and do the dietary laws. No pork, no shellfish. Then he declared that he didn't believe in the Trinity. He'd become an Arian, but we don't know the nature of his Arianism. You know, does he believe Christ was made ex nihilo out of nothing? Was he begotten out of the Father as the first creation, the firstborn creation? As many people will attack the epistle for saying. <coughs> we don't know. All we know is that this guy denies the Trinity. So he goes from Christian to Arian to Judaizer to now Seventh-day Adventist. I don't know what he does now. But that's the point I want to bring up. You can't leap into theology like that. And that's the error of Young Don. And honestly, guys, I would not be shocked if Young Don became Muslim at some point. He started out very explosively anti-Islam. He's talking crap about Islam all the time. So people would think, oh, that guy will never become a Muslim. I bet he will. I bet in a couple years he'll be sick of being alone. He'll be tired of being in a religion where there's not many people who agree with him. Because look, there's a lot of like Judaizers out there. But it's much more common to actually keep the entire law of Moses among these kind of schismatic groups. So for him to say, I keep the law, but not really. And I'm an Aryan too. There's very few people that agree with him. Because the most popular Aryans, the JWs, do not do the Sabbath and the circumcision and the pork and the shellfish abstaining. Then the SDAs do the Sabbath, but they do not necessarily abstain from all the foods. And they don't do the rest of the law. Then you have people who do the full law as Messianic Jews, but they do believe the truth. So he's in the middle position, and I'm assuming he'll get sick of it at some point. And he'll get sick of raising his kids in a system like that where there's no accountability for anything. There's no leadership. And I don't think it makes any sense scripturally. I think you either go in on the law fully, and if you accept Paul and you accept all the writings, then you'd have to do the law not for salvation, but for guidance on earth, which is, I've mentioned that many times on my channel. But you'd have to do the whole moral system for guidance on earth, not just, I like the pork and shellfish, and I like the Sabbath, but I don't like anything else. So young Don, not going to be shocked if he announces that he's Muslim one day. Then we have Sneeko. Now Sneeko, he didn't believe in Christianity. He left Christianity. He lost faith in it. And as you saw in the last one, the short with Uthman ibn Farouk, he uh, had issues with the Trinity. I don't know the length of the rest of their discussion, but Uthman, is, yeah, I think he was big a few years ago. I don't know how big he is now. Last time I heard of him, he was involved in that catch-up incident with Sam Shamoon. So I have just no clue what's going on. I don't keep up with those people anymore. Sam, I'll watch. I don't, I don't keep up with these weird popular Muslim groups that much. And uh, it was clear that Sneeko only knows pop questions, as somebody said. So I, I would respect a Muslim who knows the real theology. Like even Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, I think his metaphysics are a little wacky, believing in anthropomorphism, but not quite anthropomorphism, but not allowing for the true full-scale divine simplicity that uh, you would find in like Ismaili neoplatonic uh, Shiism, or other parts of traditional Sunni Islam, but I can respect that Jake knows the theology. Sneeko doesn't know the theology, and so I feel like maybe he didn't necessarily do it for a grift. He just generally thought Christianity was gibberish, but now it's kind of a grift. <coughs> now Islam for him and for Andrew Tate is like a label or an identity. It's a it's like a gang. You know, you're with your boys. You're doing your Muslim stuff. So I can respect people who take the religion seriously. I don't have a problem with your average Muslim just doing their average thing. I have a problem with two types of people. Grifters who act like Christianity destroyed their lives, but they never understood what it was. Sneeko in question. And two, the people who go online and just insult. So that's why I do these kind of refutations. So dealt with Trinitarianism. We dealt with textual criticism. We dealt with the preservation of the Bible as textual criticism, of course. Logic, Aristotelianism, philosophy, and other things. I don't think I have, like, i running out of material here. It did not take long to refute these ideas. So I'm going to open up the stream yard. People will come in. Um, <coughs> if you want to. I'm pretty sure Donna's video explains theology. I did watch it, Awake. I did watch it. I've seen it. Yeah, he says he's an Aryan, but then he says that he is a... Uh, <clears throat> Like he says he's an Aryan, but then we don't know what his Aryanism is. There's so many different terms of Aryanism. There's Neoplatonic Aryanism. That's what Arius held to. 
Then there's the homoi Uzion crowd that were considered lowercase o orthodox by St. Hilary of Poitiers. They different, had different terminology than the Nicene crowd. They were still technically Christians. Would he agree to that? We don't know. Again, if you guys want to come in, if y'all are brave, you will come in. And by the way, I'm accepting people, if they want to debate, like, come in now. You can debate me on Islam. You tell me if I'm wrong. I want to know if I'm wrong, obviously. I don't think I am. I don't think I've, I've met a, an opinion that can best the things that we talk about here. But I've also noticed Sneeko attacks the law stuff too, but I already dealt with that in the DC Dawa refuted. I'll probably be refuting this guy called Dean Response. Well, we got the machine lies in here. He's a Muslim, I believe, but we're on good terms. Um, he doesn't knock on Christianity, so I don't knock on him. I've been on the show a couple times. But yeah, so when you find people like Sneeko, it's interesting. And then we have Mohammed Hijab. He's known as like this big Muslim guy. But And even though he's more intelligent than uh, Ali Dawa, the problem with Hijab is that he's more of like a builder now, but not in a very intelligent way. So he started with trying to debate Christians all day, but now he's just trying to build like some kind of society for Muslim diaspora. <coughs> LS, how dare you? How dare you? Take a look at this. I don't want to hear about... Man. You take a look at this right now. I had to make the new page. If you look at this right here, uh, uh, what do we got? Oh, oh, Adam Green refuted. And guys, why do people keep asking me about Tovia Singer? Refuted. I already did Tovia Singer. I already did Adam Green. I'll do another Tovia Singer video. So that's that. I don't want to hear no more about Tovia at the moment and Adam Green. Um, but the point is with Hijab and these other guys, like they don't even know the theology that well. Like Hijab had Jordan Peterson and and uh, what was his name Jonathan Pajot, and he didn't know what monarchia was. He didn't know how to explicate it or defend against it. So I don't know about that. You love Adam Greenblatt. All right, Machine Lies, get on here. Let's talk about Mr. Greenblatt. It's over for you. I'm kidding. What's up? How's it going? <laughs> What's up? What's going on? Not so much. It's it's weird. Usually I'm on your show. Now you're on my show. How's it going? Yeah, that's right. You were on there a couple of times. I thought I'd uh, you know, return the favor. Thank you so much for showing up there. It took a lot of bravery for you to hop up there for sure because of all the uh <laughs> different characters that were there at the time. You know, yeah, I, yeah, a lot of different characters. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like to keep it a little bit, uh, you know, tumultuous on my show. Yeah, a little, a little, a little spice in that dish. Yeah, more entertainment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like a nine-hour stream, and you don't know who's gonna show up. <laughs> I always love that about your channel, honestly. Like you don't know what is gonna walk through that door, pretty much. <laughs> uh so yeah, what can I do you for? What, what would you like to talk about? Well, it's just interesting, the topics. Uh, you oh, know, yeah. I definitely uh, did a show on Sneak and Glow. You know, I call them Sneak and Glow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, the Sneako guy, you know, is a total disgrace, you know. Um, and also Zerka, you know. I don't know uh, who People keep mentioning. I don't know who. Oh, my Zerka God. Is. It's, it's horrible. They're, like, hanging out with porn stars or so some some type of thing. Him and Zerka are buddies, and, and they're also into white nationalists club with with uh nick fuentes wow. so it, it just yeah. doesn't get any better like a bunch of yeah guys it's highly who yeah, aren't it's highly, white in the white nationalist club <laughs> yeah it's highly it's highly troubling it's highly troubling they're a little like uh whatever the psyop is you know with those types of people and um i assume that like whatever muhammad hijab is on i think that he's a very dangerous character you know uh he's weird like he's kind of weird like he, he acts like he knows oh we got a virtual background <laughs> oh, hang on a second. <laughs> one moment, machine. We got a super chat. How does one apply proper hermeneutics and reading and interpreting scripture? Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say this is why it's beneficial to attach yourself to a church. Not just because it's cool, but because you get accountability. So if you read a verse and you read it incorrectly, that's not the end of the religion because people have already read it and they have dissected the original meaning and the context and the church has come to a universal decision for the most part on what that verse could be. 
So I would read a study Bible. And if, if you're not, you don't have a denomination yet, I would look at Protestant, Catholic, and Orthodox. Read their commentaries. I sometimes love to read Protestant commentary. It can be pretty interesting. I don't agree with all of it, but they get a lot of stuff right. And the emphasis is a little different. And anyway, we go ahead, Machine Lies. You're talking about Zerka and Sneak Glow and Muhammad Hijab. What's your opinion on Hijab, actually? But I think Hijab is a complete uh, bad actor. And I think that that type of organization that they're behind, run by that guy, Abdul Brahim Green or something like that. It, you know, he's a convert and um, he's got some very, like, sort of perennialist ideals and, um, you know, that sort of. Uh, you know, uh, whole shebang. And also Nick Fuentes, I don't know if you saw this, but I covered it on my show where he, he called himself a Christian futurist. And so did um, Andrew Wilson. So this, this terminology, not just Christian nationalist, but Christian futurist, I, I find it highly, highly troubling. You know, well, yes. Yeah, they're see, manufacturing true. a dogma, you know? Yeah, this is interesting. Guys, just so you're aware, I mention the word futurism a lot on my channel. Machine Lines is not talking about that. Uh, when I say futurism, I mean how evangelicals right. in Texas talk about the Book of Revelation. He's right. talking not, about not, democracy and yeah, not in terms of eschatology, but in terms yeah. of the um, the artistic movement of the um, uh, um, that came after Dadaism. You know, yeah. it's called futurism. You know, it's kind of an extension of Cubism, and um, right. what it is is it's a foray into modern art and modern philosophy, and you know that sort of thing. Well, that's funny. Yeah, I mean, here's the problem. When people get into modern, especially philosophy, the past 200 years, this is one of the big subjects that I wrote about in my book, is this misinterpretation of what the Bible is talking about. I'm sure you can relate on the Muslim side. With people Definitely. in the West like just are blatantly misrepresenting what the religion might actually be. And so when you look into future or modern philosophies, that's one of the main dangers there. I want to Poke you a little more on hijab and sneako. With hijab, what in particular do you think he's doing this either sinister or just like the, not the con correct? The contingency argument. I think the argument from contingency is complete dog shit. You know, I don't think that you could justifiably use that sort of ontological transcendence and modal ontology to argue for Islam. You know, I think that oh, that's, I you know, so it's kind of like an exaggerated tag, but for Islam. Oh, opinion. yeah. 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 I think. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, um, you know, Aristotle invented like the tag argument. And then um, I mean, then I think Avicenna was like a super Aristotelian. You know, he was like an Aristotelian plus like Neoplatonism. So he was like trying to justify yeah. um, Neoplatonism to the Aristotelians. So, he, so, so he's a, like a super apostate. You know, so so I, I actually don't, you know, understand why you would use Avicenna's argument, especially after Ghazali already told you it's it's apostasy to even to, to, to attempt to use the argument you know well, here's I mean? the so, funny thing is that hijab will i mean he's not a salafi but he hangs out with that kind of internet salafi crowd that, that, that that's another danger i perceive i believe that islamic modernism and christian futurism they, they, they kind of go hand in hand in this way yeah. and i think salafism is part of islamic modernism i agree with look, you 100 percent yeah because yeah, Salafism is, is a modern con reconstruction of Islamic doctrine. It's like Islamic Protestantism, essentially. I, I would say, it's just, to be more specific, I tweeted this the other day. It's Islamic uh, Baptist Church. It's not even just right. a reformation. It's a restorationist movement where you're basically saying everybody before me was in a blackout where they weren't doing real theology. Until and the it's statist. Something came wrong. Yeah. Right. Right. To that end, it's totally statist, like the like a um, like a Zionism or something, you know, where it's it's trying to like, you know, like Messianic Judaism, where it's trying to incorporate like elements of Judaism into a nationalistic like type of thing. It's yeah, it's like a precursor. for. Yeah, I see what you mean there. I mean, with hijab, it's, I was just going to point out it's weird how he can apply to like Aristotelian, Neoplatonic, Avicenna stuff while hanging out with the Neo Salafi crowd. Wouldn't that be? The exact yeah, yeah exactly but I don't he, get that. <laughs> yeah but the problem is is with ibn Taymiyyah. he brings in this kind of you know you know you know he leaves room for like empiricism essentially you know like the way the way ibn Taymiyyah's methodology is you know it's like you know pseudo empirical and i think it did influence empiricism you know if you if you look at the trajectory of ideas you know yeah i would agree with you on that i mean there's there's a lot of things that people don't get before they jump into this 
like with Sneeko at least, the Islamic grift. Like he doesn't even, I don't think he understands the depth of theology. Like his, a lot of this stuff is pop culture, like Trinity. Okay. It was like very basic stuff. Like how about we get to the actual metaphysics? People don't seem to understand that when they're saying I'm the representative of Islam on the internet. I mean, that's a pretty big, a bold thing to say, but a lot yeah, of people like, act like that. Yeah, but you don't understand the term homo uzio. <laughs> so, so get off the stage then. <laughs> right. no, I, they don't even understand the term like person. We don't even have to use Greek. Like, oh, this right. is a person. What's a person? Is that a being? What is that? Yeah. No, I don't know who, hang on. I don't know who Donnie Darkened is from XLS. Why don't you describe this? interesting entity in the comment <laughs> we'll see he, he's great about. yeah he's great he's like an apocalyptic theorist uh, conspiracy oh. guy um but i yeah, i'd say most of the stuff is is kind of you know uh 50 50 obviously <laughs> but, but um but um but it's fascinating it's like trump end time stuff he thinks trump is the antichrist type of stuff so i i, I mean oh, it's definitely, I just, it's definitely fascinating just from I partake in more of that than you do. But <laughs> yeah, <for sure> you. <laughs> like conspiracy shit all the time. Yeah, yeah I, no, I'm sure you do. Um, have you had any? I, I haven't seen your channel in, in a little bit. I've been meaning to actually. I wanted to hop onto one of your streams at some point this week. Have you had anybody interesting on the last uh, month or so? A couple months. I don't. I don't really get that many guests. It's just a normal crowd surfing that I do. Today's episode that I did was rather contentious, you know, so I really? think I think you would find value in the last part because they argued about the Bible for like six hours. And there is uh, the, the only reason you would find value in it is because yeah. of the variety of opinions. You know, that's the thing is that you, you may not find a lot of right views on my panel, right. but you'll see the, the diversity of opinions of what people are picking up from the different fringe internet communities that are out there. And it is very surprising. It's because, surprising. Yeah. It's also concerning at the same time. Oh, yeah. 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 We, yeah, we had a guy come up and um, he had been taught by a guy who he said spoke Hebrew fluently. Um, you know, um, uh, um, he said he, he spoke Greek and Hebrew fluently. And he wrote all of these uh, free studies about the Bible. Uh, the, uh, this is an old man who always comes on my show named Rock E. Shepard. A fascinating character, uh, but yeah, I think um, I think you'd um, I think you'd sure. definitely get a kick out of just hearing their view because you're not going to hear those types of views, I think, anywhere else on the internet. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, I want to I want to ask you now, even though we're past the Sneeko subjects. If anybody came here for the Sneeko part, that was the first forty five minutes. We're doing a slightly different topic now. So, <laughs> you mentioned Nick Fuentes. Some people in my comment section defended him, guys. Uh, I'm sorry, but I, I take very I take very seriously people who obs obsess with and foment Jew conspiracies. Like it's actually more suspicious if you are that upset about Jewish conspiracies than the actual Jews doing Jewish conspiracies. I get more suspicious when I see somebody with millions of followers talking about, you know, the hook noses did X, Y, and Z. What do you think of that topic? without getting too contentious, what do you think of something like that? Because that pops up a lot on like social media. People always ask me, I'm like, guys, I don't trust people who are obsessed with hook nose conspiracies. It's it's a complicated topic. Um, I told Adam Green personally um, that I disagree with his view and we went, we had a little back and forth about it, you know, because I did have him on my show. I don't know if you know that, but um, oh. yeah. Well, yeah, I know Adam Green, but uh, maybe we can debate Adam Green soon. Um, have a Gene and Adam Green debate on the machine live. I've been dying cool. for that. I keep asking him. Oh, I got you. Yeah, I got your back. Yeah, we'll do it soon. Let's you do know, it. We'll, we'll try to figure it out. If he's down for it, I'll definitely set it up. Okay. Right. Yeah. Nice. But, but yeah, anyway, um, yeah, like with Adam Green, he's interesting. And uh, I, I just think that a lot of this, and you may disagree, machine, but I, I think a lot of this stuff is kind of like a psyop, like it's an exaggerated Dreyfus affair where it's like, we're going to foment this obsession. Well, I don't agree with the mythicism to, to, to be honest. Okay. The, f f first and foremost, it would be the mythicism. So the, the first thing I attacked them on and, and even, and, uh, um, and even Dr. Skirbina, who's basically a Spinozist pantheist, he, um, you know, the guy who taught me Dr. Skirbina, um, who taught me philosophy, 
He doesn't yeah. believe in Christianity or Islam or anything. You know, yeah. he he's a he's a total Platonic philosopher that talks about Plato and Aristotle. Like he believes in Plato and Aristotle is real. <laughs> so, you know, um, so he just believes a hundred percent in that. You know, I even went to Greece to 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 study in Athens. You know, and um, yeah, he was uh, the, and I tried to press him on you know Plato and Aristotle because I because uh, I was convinced that they were false. You know, so yeah. uh, especially Aristotle, I said, I said, Plato's right. Plato, there's something right about Plato, but Aristotle is complete garbage. <laughs> like, how could you like Aristotle? That's so you know, interesting, it, though. Like, I'm, I was almost the opposite of you. I was like, oh, you know, 70 percent of Aristotle's good, but Plato's like a whack job. Like, that, was, <laughs> that was my main. I think it's like left brain, right brain or some shit. I don't it's know. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, but anyway, continue, continue. Well, I just think. um you know, the Jews, uh, you know, um, the, the, well, the first point is a mythicism. The second point is what is a Jew? You know, um, you know, what is a Jew in the first century? Let's ask, let's ask Rabbi Shmuley. I'm sure he knows. Can we get Rabbi Shmuley on this? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, go ahead. shmuley has got too many ties to the messianics to give a, give actual, uh, a, a, a credible position on even Judaism at this point. So, so, um, yeah, so Shmuley is totally out of the race, right? I would just say, you know, on this debate, let me, I'm going to talk to Wildburn. Guys, if you want to talk about this, hop in the dang diddly video, all right? Wilbur, Wildburn says, it's difficult to ignore in America. Zionists and dual citizens are control of our government. Hollywood media, etc. hook nose. Yeah, use hook nose. Let's not say Jew anymore. Uh, I would basically say to that, that that doesn't, that doesn't really prove some kind of global or even continental conspiracy. And I'm going to tell you why. If that is true, that because they're disproportionately represented, which may be the case, then that means that the cops who are Christians in Egypt are secretly destroying Egyptian society too, because they're overrepresented in TV, they're overrepresented as millionaires and billionaires, they're overrepresented in high government positions, and underrepresented, under underrepresented, sorry, in manual labor and lower end jobs, whereas Muslims, ninety nine percent, they have that job. Or sorry, that job is 99%. Of course, of course they do. So the yeah. point is that if like if that's the argument for the hook nose in America, then that means the cops in Egypt are even worse. And there's a reason for this. America has an issue with minorities where minorities are like the oppressed one in America. But in a lot of the other parts, especially in the old world, it's actually the other way around. The minorities usually stick together, do better than the majority. Like the Chinese, the Han Chinese are called the hook noses of Southeast Asia because they run the locals out of business in Malaysia and Indonesia. So I would just say, I, like, that's a good point. And yeah, there may be some conflict of interest there, which I do agree with, Wildburn. But that doesn't necessarily mean we have now an Adam Green level conspiracy on our hands because this happens all over the world with different minorities. What do you think of that, Machine? Well, I think <laughs> underlying his uh, entire opinion is this fact that um christianity is jewish right so so if you so if you actually go to so if you actually say that anything is so if you actually say that things are ruled by christianity you know so for thousands of years things are ruled by christianity that's actually jewish rule so it doesn't have to be jews in control for Adam Green's theory to completely pan out, so that's an that, that, that that's the thing. If you're gonna if you're gonna debate him, you have to realize that quickly. Oh, I know. I, I do yeah. understand that what when he means the Jews, I'm sorry, the hook noses are in control. He he, he also means their, Muslims and Christians, right? Yeah. No, so. This is the thing that's interesting about him. I I'm of the exact opposite opinion, and and I pointed this out. I don't know if you know. I did a very long. I did a half hour HD refutation of Adam Green like a year ago. And I basically pointed out that um, the hook noses, whether we're talking about Bronze Age or First Century, their philosophy, their beliefs, their biblical morality is not what Adam Green has a problem with. Like when he's saying, oh, you know, the Christians gave us pacifism and stuff and that's destroying the world. And what's the other guy? Varg? Varg also hates Christianity, thinks it's a Jewish trick. These guys miss the fact that like cosmopolitan extreme hermetical cultism is the opposite of what the hook noses were teaching. So if anything, he has a problem with Greek and Roman philosophy. And I pointed that out in the video. I think a lot of what these guys say when they say, oh, Christianity is bad and it was started by Jews. Therefore, Jews invented pacifism and stuff. 
they're in for a shock because a lot of that comes from Greek and Roman thought, not from Jewish thought. That's what I pointed out. I, again, I'd love to have a talk with him if it's, uh, you know, if it's in the cards for us. <coughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'll try to. Yeah, because it would be entertaining for sure. But um, but yeah, I think first century, it's a real problem to, you know, sort of figure out what a Jew is in the first place. You know, uh, you know, as the Gospels tell us. You know, there's four different groups of Jews in the first century. So, you know, so there's various interpretations of Judaism in the first century, you know, and then and then after the first century, you know, you go into the fourth to seventh century and they're inventing all sorts of new oral traditions in their Talmud and all this stuff. So what is Judaism after Christianity? Judaism actually is formed after Christianity, centuries later after Christianity. So I think that you know, that is going to, you know, um, factor in, but, um, but, but that doesn't really, because he's focused on the origin point. So he okay. just says that, that Christianity is invented by Jews. Right. And, um, and that, and that, I don't know if you're familiar with Nietzsche's theory, that'll help you. Yeah, because, no, I'm very familiar. And I think that, that he's getting a lot of his material from that. And again, well, he I'm, hasn't read it. The, see, see, that's the thing uh, is that me and Dr. Skirbina, um, you know, we read Nietzsche because um, we got, um, you know, whatever uh, philosophy. We're the philosophy in the university, so we have to read Nietzsche, right? Um, and it's Antichrist fifty-eight through sixty. Yeah, right. That's one of the key passages, I think, um, where he actually says that Paul invented Christianity. You know, now Adam Green doesn't actually say that. You know, yeah. like like Muslims will say that, and um, and other people will say that, but. Um, but you know, um, I don't. But but Adam Green, he's a mythicist, so he won't say that. Well, here's the thing, and this is the last. That we won't discuss Adam Green anymore. We'll wait for our our honored pagan guest to reveal himself at some date, so that we can talk. But my last moment would basically be my thesis is that most of what I like, what I said earlier, most of what Adam and these Varg characters have a problem with is not Jewish thought, and number two that the Jewish thought at the time was superior to the Greco-Roman thought, which uh, most Christians say the opposite. Like, oh, the Jews, like whatever, they merge with the Greeks, therefore the Greeks are awesome and we can claim all their stuff. I would say that the Jews saved the Greeks and the Romans, but we'll get into that another time. I'm going to add that, this guy. That, called- see, see, that's going to go disastrous because that's exactly what he claims, but in the negative. Well, I'm going to prove to him. So that's, so that's going to be, that, 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 that might actually be a very interesting debate because it's head to head on the same position that, 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 Actually, that could be the question of the debate is, did Jews save Greco-Roman civilization or destroy it? Or destroy it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Th- it, that'd be an, exactly. That'd be a perfect debate. See, yeah. I think I would be the perfect guy to talk to him because I'm I'm on the same wavelength. I'm not trying to say, yeah, I agree with you, Adam. The Jews are dumb, but we're a group religion. I'm saying, all right, fine. We are Jewish. Let's let's do this, man. I got to add a guy to the call now. If you want to stay on machine, I yeah, have no a guy like you who would like to join the stage. For sure, yeah. Hello, death culture. How are you doing? Excellent. How are you? Greetings. Greetings. I don't think you've been on stream before. Welcome. No, I have not, but I've been a connoisseur of the apologetics that's uh, been going on in recent months, and, and uh, I found your channel. And you haven't become mentally ill yet? So congrats. I'm joking. Go oh, ahead. I'm already halfway there, <laughs> dealing with the modern world. Yeah. Go ahead. Did you want to talk about any subject in particular, or comment on what we uh, already discussed? Yeah, I... I I noticed you invoked uh, Adam Green. I don't know if you've seen this debate, but the debate with Miles Polin, that is the best uh, uh, Adam Green debate ever because every point that Adam brought up, Miles had a a, a response just waiting in his back pocket. And I can send you a link too if you'd like uh, to listen to it. It's phenomenal. And it's, you know, basically three hours on the kill stream, Adam trying to prove his theory. Miles is on the defensive. It was a defense... you know, TLDR, it was a defensive victory for Miles because every point that he brought up, he had something in return that refutes his assertions. So, Very nice. yeah, I'll definitely check that out. If you could just DM in the private chat the link. Yeah, I'll absolutely. I, I'll, I'll pull it up right now and uh, you and Machinist can keep talking while I dig this up for you. Cool. Um, but yeah, so anyway, Adam Green thing I think will be fine. I do want to swing back real quick before we get on to hook nose Adam stuff with Sneeko and characters like him machine. Do you think that him 
trying to represent Islam as a net negative for other Christians who might be interested? I think it's just a net negative for just, you know, monotheism. <laughs> you know, um, I think anybody like that that's, you know, colluding with porn stars, they're complete degenerate, you know. Uh, it's all always- e- yeah, a pop philosopher, you know, really. I think that type of bumper sticker, you know, philosophy and, you know, that pop psychology, you know, that is a real death nail to anything that's serious, you know. So obviously Speaker's Corner and these types of outfits, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm uh, I mean, you know, we're talking about getting Adam Green. Um, You know, we should start a debate league because we see so many people, you know, um, we meet so many people and, yeah. you know, it, it's hard to find serious people. And then once you do, you want to get them in a room and, and get them to lock horns, you know, and no, we could do, we could, we could do like a weekly thing where it's like every Thursday or whatever, it's open debate night, but it's moderated somehow. I don't know. Up to you. you we get yeah. collaborate yeah. on that. Of course. Maybe yeah. on rumble for the spicier stuff. If you want to talk about the grabblers, which I don't oh. mind talking about them. <laughs> One thing machine. I have a friend on Instagram who's going to have his friend debate a Muslim. He's asked me to be the Christian moderator. They need a Muslim moderator. Would you be open to that if I sent you some of the information? Sure. I, uh, my, my schedule is a little bit funky because of Ramadan, but, you know. Right, right. Uh, well, ahead. I'll send it to you, and if you can't do it, no harm. Just thought for I'd sure. ask. For sure, um, yeah. I'll take a look at it. Yeah. Cool. But, yeah, yeah, more debate stuff would be really good. I recently had – redeemed zoomer on here and we talked about calvinism and protestantism and whatnot i guess that, that was interesting actually machine do you know uh dr khalil andani no you don't know him you never no. heard of him no. all right uh and i have heard of james white <laughs> so uh, dr andani is a ismaili shia muslim theologian professor he has a pretty big youtube channel and uh, he's debated some of the top dogs He's debated some Christians. He's debated pretty much every internet Salafi, like uh, Jake, the Muslim metaphysician. And he's going to be coming on the channel either next week or whenever he's available. So I'd love if, if you were able to watch that and maybe pipe in. I think, well, after this video, maybe you could look up some of his stuff. It's going to be a good talk. That's all I'll say. Because he, he knows sure. what he's talking about. It'll be a good discussion. For sure. I'll keep it in mind. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, guys, I'm going to go in a, probably like 10 minutes. So if anybody has any more questions or they want to hop on the stream, now would be your opportunity. Uh, I dropped something for you, Machinist Lies. It was uh, an interview. Well, it was actually a response to an interview of uh, Skrbina and Adam Green. It was done by the Godcast. It was the same guy, uh, Miles Polin, and his crew. Uh, they oh, do phenomenal okay. work. I wish they were on YouTube, but they're probably a little too spicy for that. But anyhow... Uh, they produce some really good stuff, even as Protestants and uh, a Lutheran co-host on there for that. I'm Orthodox. So I don't advocate all their positions, but they got some pretty good takes, I think. Check that out for sure. Miles Poland. I'll, I'll check out that debate. I want to hop on, Jim. Well, you know what, buddy boy? You can't. I'm kidding. There's the More the merrier. We've got like 10 minutes, so... No monologuing from anyone, and let's keep it to maybe one to two questions. That is the link. It's right there in the YouTube. If anybody wants to hop on, discuss, I guess you could really bring up anything at this point. We went from Sneeko to the Hook Noses to Adam Green to all this other stuff. I'm going to add this guy, Maximos. It's been a while since I spoke to him. How you doing, man? Hello? Hey, I can hear you. What's hey, up? Hey, Jim. How, what's up, mate? Not much. I'm sure you for a while. Yeah, it has been a little while. Um, fighting a uh, demon Lent, the demon Lent. Uh, what am I saying? The Lent, the demons of Lent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mixed up. Know that feel. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask, uh, how has the Discord scene been? I haven't been on Discord in like two, three months. I don't know what's going on over there. Um, if you're active. Well, we've had to become stricter because I don't know if you're aware of. People like Maximo, Maximo, what's his name? Maximo, Max, Maximologia. Maximologia on Twitter. Yeah, I know that guy. What about him? He has he has created private servers. Um, 
and there's been a bit of trouble with his translations and uh, new converts being tripped up and I see falling into all types of weird views and when they come on we have to blacklist them and then they end up gossiping and slandering us anyway. I've noticed that there's been a lot of disunity just in the last few weeks, maybe last month, on online orthodoxy. Like there's been a lot of controversy with the Maximologia guy, with Jonathan Hill, between him and Jay Dyer. I've noticed a little bit of tension the last month or so. Yeah. I'm not involved in that, but I've just been observing it from afar. Yeah, these quotes that are translated, um, I've had to explain to a 15-year-old that I you can't just translate a, a 15th century Greek text into Google Translation. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> May as well. May as well do that. And, and, and that's really it. Uh, there's a new bot that Kai made that nice. will blacklist anyone across all of the servers ban them completely if it comes to that point. Uh, Sir Mahakal, I would agree with Chesterson there. Maybe not in the exact communication of what he's saying, but basically, and this is what it'll boil down to if I do end up getting an audience with Rabbi Greenblatt, we'll be, we'll be discussing whether the Greeks saved the Jews or, and then the Jews are kind of a begrudging part of Christianity, or did the Jews, and by Jews we mean biblical Israelites, did they save the Greeks? That'll be probably the primary thing about the debate. We'll save that. Uh, well, what I think will be really helpful for many, I, I don't mean to interrupt guys, but like, uh, is to define Jew right off the start. Like what is a Jew by definition? And yeah. from what I understand is a Jew technically is that who descends from the tribe of Judah. Jesus descended from the tribe of, tribe of Judah, ergo he was a Jew, but he was not a Pharisee. So there's, you got to make that distinction. And a lot of people, especially like the, the you know, these sort of like neo-pagans or uh, Christ skeptics and, you know, conspiracy theorists, they often conflate Moses being one as well. No, he was not a Jew in that sense. And the modern Jews today who descend from the Pharisees, they're the grabblers, Christ was not one of those. So you got to really make that distinction there as well, I feel. Well, we but will. I'm not trying to take your show. No, no, it's fine. What I'll probably agree with on Adam is that we stick to discussing the first century and around that time period. If, again, it's all hypothetical. You may not want to talk to me. But if he does, we'll stick to that time period. It's not going to be mentioning today's modern rabbinics. But if we just stick to that time period on a racial and religious sense, that'll be the primary debate. Anyway, um, if anyone has any last comments or questions now's the time otherwise i'll be closing the stream in a moment so first i'm going to go in order we'll start with machine lies any last uh comments or questions before i close out well um i guess i'll just say that uh descending from the tribe of judah i guess that's not uh you know gonna be a precise definition because uh, th th that would make it a racial definition and then you'd have to define it by bloodlines whereas in the Old Testament there's many converts to Judaism I'll just say that but, I would yeah. just say yeah I'd say it's a mixture of that and religion so when Adam Green says Judaism I know he also means Christianity anything from that root yeah I get what he means uh, well I think in it oh sorry hey go ahead now well, I think in his eyes that uh, anybody that believes uh, the so-called Abrahamic faith, uh, he defines as, uh, as a Jew, which is a very, very broad term and stupid. But I would uh, say that what unites and, the Abraham – all right, go first, and then I'll do my comment. In uh, Machine Lies, I, uh, I put something in, in the chat for you, uh, that interview with David Skrbina and the Godcast uh, take for you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, yeah, yeah. Uh, my last comment on this subject, which I did not expect us to discuss today, would basically be, uh, is, is the core of what unites the Abrahamic faiths really Jewish or is it Greek? Is it Hellenism? And so that, that'll be one of the main points of talk. All right, now it's Maximos' turn and then we're going to close out the stream. <laughs> oh. Okay. Are you, are you going to be doing any more work on, uh, you know... Greek pantheism or sorry not sorry I'm tired right now I'm missing my words up Platonism or any of that sort 
Uh, yeah, in, in the future, I'll, yeah, in the future, I'll probably do a stream on the difference between, like, uh, I guess, philosophical Christianity and then what goes too far into heresy with like hardcore mm. real Hellenism. So uh, we'll do a stream on that in the future, maybe sometime okay. next week. Yeah. Right. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, uh, good yeah, to meet you, Gene. For anybody who just hopped in. The Sneeko topic is the first 45 minutes. After that, we get into all manner of discussion. But yeah, I'm going to close it out for tonight. And uh, 